Hello, welcome back. In this lesson in physics, we're going to cover the concept called uniform motion. If you want to blow it out a little bit bigger, it would be uniform motion in one dimension. So now finally, after we've covered the concepts of displacement and distance, and also speed and velocity, and then finally acceleration, and of course instantaneous velocity, instantaneous acceleration, we have all of the ingredients in place to actually start calculating how things are going to move. So ultimately what we want to do, the end game, is we want to be able to take a baseball and I want to be able to throw it at an angle to the ground and then we want to be able to calculate things like how far does the baseball go before it hits the ground again. We want to calculate how high does the baseball go. We want to calculate how long does it in time, how many seconds does it travel and so on. And so that's where we're going. But before we get there, we're going to talk about motion only in one dimension, which means just this way and that way, plus x and minus x. That's the only way that, that these things that we're going to start calculating can travel. They cannot go up and down. They cannot go to you, to the camera, and away. They can only go in the plus x direction and also in the minus x direction. And so the simplest kind of motion of any kind is what we call uniform motion. Uniform motion in physics just means, it's a complicated sounding thing, but it just means constant velocity. The velocity is not changing. So uniform motion, what does uniform mean? It means unchanging, right? So it means unchanging velocity, velocity that doesn't change. So let's talk about that. Actually, what we're going to do, I'll just give you the roadmap in this lesson, is we're going to describe uniform motion. We're going to give, going to give the equation of uniform motion. And then we're going to squeeze every last bit of understanding that we can out of that equation so that you know in your gut what it actually means. And then in the next lesson, we're going to start solving actual problems so you'll get some practice with it. So what we're going to do is start talking about the concept we just mentioned. It's called uniform motion. Right? And I just said in words what uniform means. There's really, it's really the, the same thing, but you can think of it three different ways. So the first way is what I, I told you, is constant velocity. So let's just take a second and understand what constant velocity means. It means the object is moving, but it's not speeding up and it's not slowing down. It's just marching along at some stately constant value. It's very simple motion. Nothing in real life travels at a real constant velocity because you have friction and other things or wind or some something pulling it like gravity but in this perfect case we're gonna say things are just moving along at a constant velocity nothing ever changes. So it stands to reason that if it's going at constant velocity another way you could define uniform motion is that the acceleration is equal to zero. Because when you think about it, acceleration means you're changing your velocity. That's what acceleration means. So if it's a constant velocity, you're not accelerating at all. You're not speeding up, you're not slowing down. So the acceleration is equal to zero. And then the third way to think about it, which is exactly equivalent to the other two, is you can think of the position, the position time graph, which we've been using all this time. We plot the position versus time uh, graph is a, what do you think it's going to be? It's going to be a straight line. And this is better illustrated by example. This is exactly what we learned about when we started talking about this kind of thing to begin with. We plot position versus time, and when everything is constant, meaning the, well, the position's not constant, the position's changing, but when the velocity is constant, you're just graphing a straight line in position. So let's take just a second to draw this over here. We will take a case like this. We'll draw a couple of small graphs here. This is the time dimension, and this is the position dimension. So when we say uh, in meters, let's call it, uh, position versus time, this is the kind of graph we're talking about. Remember, it's only in one dimension. How far in x am I going uh, as compared to how time is moving along? So if the velocity is not changing, constant velocity, that means the acceleration is zero, then the position time we're saying is a graph of a straight line which would look something like this. Of course, you have some time tick marks down here, you know, one second, two second, three seconds, four seconds, whatever. And then you have some position in meters, like one meter, two meters, three meters, four meters. What this is basically saying is that time marches on. Time never stops. It's ticking and ticking and ticking. That never stops. But every time another second goes by, notice we travel the same amount of distance. Rise over run, rise over run. Every second we go, another chunk of distance in the vertical direction. So what ends up happening is you're mapping out a line. The slope of this line is never, ever, ever changing. So the slope of the line might be steeper. See, if I have a line going even steeper, I'm going pretty fast here because I'm getting a lot of distance down the road for a very short amount of time. 
if I have a very shallow line, like maybe a line that would go like this, then I'm going very slow. My velocity is slow because as time marches on, I'm only going a little bit farther in x. So the steepness of the line obviously is related to the velocity. We've been saying that over and over again. But in any case, when it's a straight line position curve, that means you're doing uniform motion. Now let's go and take a look. That was the velocity graph. I'm sorry, that was the position graph. Let's look at what the velocity graph would look like for this curve. So this is a velocity in meters per second. So this is the position uh, for uniform motion as a straight line. That's what we're saying. What do you think the velocity is going to be? Well, we've said over and over again that the instantaneous velocity is going to be the slope and the line tangent to the position curve. But this position curve is just a line and it never changes slope. So the instantaneous velocity is the slope of the line tangent to this thing, which just means it's the slope of this curve at all points is exactly the same thing. So the velocity here is the same as the velocity here is the same as the velocity here because you're looking at the slope at those different points and they're all the same thing. So if this is the position, the velocity, I don't care about units, so I'm not labeling anything, but if that's the position, the velocity, what do you think it's gonna be? It's gonna be a constant, a number that doesn't change with time. Notice this could be, you know, five meters per second or whatever, and this is time ticking along in seconds. But you notice how the velocity doesn't change. It's non-zero. You could be going three meters per second or whatever, but it doesn't change. So we say, notice the acceleration zero, the position time graph is a straight line, the velocity is constant. These are just different ways of saying exactly the same thing, uniform motion. This is a straight line because the velocity is constant during uniform motion. Now just to round things out, what do you think the acceleration curve is going to look like in uniform motion? If this is seconds and this is not velocity, this is acceleration. What is the unit of acceleration? Meters per second squared, right? So I can kind of put this in parentheses, meter per second squared. So again, look at the pattern. The position curve is this. The slope of this curve at every point defines the velocity. The slope was equivalent every point, so we have a constant velocity. And then we said that the acceleration was the slope of the velocity curve. What is the slope of this flat line? I mean, it's flat. The rise over run is zero because it doesn't rise ever. It doesn't go up, it just stays flat. So rise over run is zero. So that means the acceleration curve is going to be zero down here. Right? So this is zero. This is literally zero. This is some constant positive number, and this is the straight line. So the acceleration we're saying is zero for uniform motion, which is exactly what we set up here. So these three things, it's not like there's three different things that make it uniform motion. It's all the same thing. It's just there's three different ways to look at it. Uniform motion is when the position time graph is a straight line with some slope, which also means the acceleration is zero, which also means it's the, the, the velocity is constant, and we're showing that through the graphs. Okay, so what is the equation uh, of uniform motion? We're going to write that down. The equation of uniform motion. All right, so this is the first physics equation you've ever seen. It might look a little scary, but I promise you it is not scary. I'll explain every little part of it. We say x is equal to x sub zero. You call it x naught, is how you say it, plus v naught t. So I'm going to circle this because it's the only thing I'm really trying to get across in this lesson. It's more important than anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and circle this. But you're going to end up writing this equation down for every problem you solve, at least in the beginning, and so you're going to memorize it. So don't try to study it. You'll just remember it by using it. You need to get used to the idea of seeing these little subscripts here, like a, like a little zero. This means initial. When you see v naught or x naught, it means initial position or initial velocity. Some books will have a little i down there to mean to take so you understand it's initial. But not is more um, commonly used because you're almost always looking at your 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 throwing your baseball or your motion or whatever. You're starting at t equals zero, time is equal to zero. And then you're looking at what happens as time goes on. So at time zero, t zero is the starting position, the starting velocity. So the velocity at time zero we call v naught. The position at time zero is called x naught. So what this equation is saying, I really want to break it down. I'm not going to clutter this one up. I'm going to write the equation again down below because I'm going to start marking all over it. But I want to leave this one alone by itself. So x is equal to x naught plus v naught t. If there's one thing I can impress on you in the beginning of physics that is going to serve you all the way through your class, is the following thing. You cannot 
do well in physics or chemistry or any other engineering or science or math class if you just try to memorize equations and just try to use them like candy to solve problems without really understanding what they mean. I know that it's easy in the beginning to solve problems without really understanding the equations because a lot of people will just try to find the numbers from the problem and they'll stick it in here and they'll try to find answers. But if you don't really understand the equations, then you will never be able to solve anything but the most simple problems. So we always start out with easy problems in physics and then we get more complicated. If you don't know what this really means, really, then you, you won't ever be able to construct a complicated solution to anything but the simple problem. So what I want to try to do throughout this whole class is give you the equations but explain to you what they mean so that you memorize them, of course, you have to write them down and use them, but you know what they mean so that they're not scary little things you're just trying to like use for no particular reason. So let's figure out what this equation is really telling us. Okay, x, let me switch colors here to purple here. Um, x, notice we're trying to find the position of something as we, as it's doing some uniform motion, right? So x, this variable right here, this one is the final position. You're going to have to get used to me writing POS for position because position is too long of a word. I don't like writing it. The units of position are what? Meters. It's a distance thing, right? So x is basically when we finish our motion, where did it end up? Was it 5 meters away? Well, in that case, x would be 5. Did it end up 17 meters away? Then x would be 17. What if x ended up being negative 3? Well, if x was negative 3, it's not crazy. It just means it's not that way 3 meters. It's this way. x is in the negative direction 3 meters. So, of course, x can be positive or negative, and it's just telling you how far away your thing went, whatever you're talking about, car, baseball, or whatever. All right, this one right here, I already kind of like talked about it a little bit. This is your initial position. What is the unit of, of initial position? That's also going to be in meters. So almost always, when you start a problem, you're going to be starting at position zero. Like, you'll put a little grid, or it's not really a grid, but you'll put a number line, and you're starting the clock at zero seconds, and you're starting your motion at x is equal to zero. So usually x will be zero, and you'll just stick a zero in there. But sometimes I may give you a problem, especially later when we start doing other kinds of motion. I don't want to get into it now. You might not start at zero. Like maybe I give you a problem where the race car starts five meters away from the, from the starting point. Maybe it's not starting at the, at the, at the, you know, where the lights are, where the red, red, yellow, and green lights are. Maybe the motion is actually starting from six meters away from that. So that means your initial position would go in here. So literally, this is where you end up, and this is where you start from, in meters. Okay? Pretty simple so far. Now, what is t? What do you think t is going to be? That's going to be the time elapsed, how long my motion happens. And then this guy here, let me go ahead and write this down first, I guess. This is going to be the elapsed time. I want you to always work in seconds. A lot of times uh, problems will be given to you in, in um, like miles per hour or meters per hour. You don't ever, I shouldn't say never, but you rarely want to work in hours. You just got to get used to dealing with the fact that in physics you want to deal in seconds and you want to deal in meters unless you just can't. So deal with meters, deal with seconds. So that's the time elapsed in seconds, always in seconds. Maybe you have a thousand and twenty-four seconds here. If you, you know, a big number, whatever, it doesn't matter, it's going to be in seconds. Now what do you think this is? So it's a v, that means it's a velocity, it's got this sub-zero, that means it's its initial velocity. So this is the initial velocity. All right? So what, is, what are the units of time? It's seconds. What are the units of velocity? It's going to be meters per second. The reason I'm kind of going through this is because you can learn a lot about what equations mean just by looking at units. Remember in the very beginning of the class I told you units are going to save your life. Units can actually teach you so much about, obviously you have to convert units, but even if you're not converting, just looking at the units of an equation can tell you everything about what the equation is. So what this equation is saying in a nutshell is that your final position where your baseball ends up or whatever it is is moving is going to be equal to wherever it is it starts from plus something. Because wherever it lands is obviously going to be wherever it starts from plus something to do with its motion. And whatever we're talking about motion, at least in uniform motion, means it's traveling at a constant, unchanging velocity. The velocity is not changing because it's uniform motion, right? And we're multiplying times time. What is that doing? So it's really important for us to take a second to take a look at what is happening in this right here. So velocity. What are the units of velocity? Meters per second, right? Meters per second. So if we were doing a unit conversion with meters per second, 
and we were multiplying by this, which is seconds, then what would happen? Remember, we talked about unit conversions. You cancel what's on the bottom, and you would end up with meters. So notice what's really happening here. We're saying the final position in meters is equal to the initial position in meters, plus some other calculation we'll talk about in a second. But when you do this, you end up getting meters also. The units of your equations in physics should always match. If you're going to get meters for an answer, the only way it can happen is if everything on the right-hand side add up to meters. That's the only way it can happen. If I have, you know, if I say that there are 15 jelly beans in a jar, jelly beans is my unit, then as I pick out jelly beans, I, I might say like 10 jelly beans come out and then five more jelly beans come out and they add up to 15. I'm saying the unit of of what I'm pulling out of the jar is jelly beans, it has to match with my answer. I cannot have kilograms here plus meters is going to give me meters because that's like adding apples and oranges. It doesn't work that way. When you get an answer in meters, then you better have stuff on the right-hand side that add up in, in the units of meters. Now, it's kind of hidden because this is, this is meters per second times seconds. But when you multiply it out, you can see that this term really is meters, and you're adding it to something here. So what is this actually doing? When you take velocity, this is the easiest thing to understand, right? When you're going down the road 15 miles an hour, right? How, long, uh, how far are you going to go in two hours? Well, let's make it even easier. How long are you going to go in one hour if I'm going 15 miles an hour? That means I go an hour, that's 15 miles. Another hour, another 15 miles. Another hour, another 15 miles. So after one hour, I've gone 15 miles. After two hours, you know, you multiply and you're going 30 miles. Three hours is 45 miles and so on. So all you're doing is you're taking the velocity times the time, and that is what gives you the total distance that you travel because of your motion, because of your movement. So you all know that from driving cars. You know, uh, I could go on and on. You know, four meters per second after two seconds. Yeah, four meters, eight meters. Okay, I went eight meters. So I just multiply the two. But from a unit point of view, what's happening is meters per second times seconds cancel give you meters. So what this is telling you is this is how far you've moved strictly due to the motion, which is your velocity, which is your, the velocity you're given in the problem, times how many seconds has elapsed. This is how far I've moved from A to B. Where was part A at? A was my initial position. So. In a nutshell, it's telling you that your final position of whatever it is, is that, that you're throwing, like a baseball or a car or a, or a bow and arrow or something that travels, the final resting place is going to be equal to wherever it started from in meters plus how far it traveled in meters due to its velocity. That's the punchline of this equation. So x is equal to x naught plus v naught t literally is a statement that's saying, hey, wherever you land is wherever you started from plus however far you traveled due to your velocity, because velocity times time means the distance traveled. That's about all I want to say in this section. If you understand that, which I'm confident everybody watching this will understand that, then you already understand a lot more than a lot of physics students, because a lot of times you just read this equation and you're like, oh, I guess I'll use it. I have no idea what it means. But, but now that you know what it means, you're not just blindly doing stuff for no reason. You have a deep understanding of the problems. So let's go on into the next lesson. Let's solve some problems, and you'll see how easy it is to use this equation to solve simple problems in motion in physics.